The gates of Buckingham Palace are open once more as season 3 of The Crown is now streaming on Netflix. But this time round the royal family had a whole new look, so it begs the question, who plays a better Queen Elizabeth II? This video I will keep spoilers to a minimum, so if you are yet to watch the entirety of season 3, you won't be spoiled too much. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Matt Rogers. Up until now, Claire Foy was the Queen, and many struggled with the idea of a new cast. I personally was open to the idea, especially since it was the plan all along to change the cast. And it turns out my high hopes were well placed. Olivia Common may be good at comedy, but she also plays a sovereign incredibly. Like Foy, her mannerisms, voice, and even walk was uncanny. Claire Foy, of course, was a tough act to follow, with multiple awards, including a Golden Globe for the role. But Coleman didn't come unequipped, with a Golden Globe and an Academy Award of her own, for a role as a Queen, no less. But let's start with the Queen's British accent. Foy was brilliant at the Queen's English, and Coleman was no different. The show's dialect coach does an incredible job keeping it accurate to the time. The dialect coach, William, who's amazing, came up with a way of us getting into it, as it were. Uh-huh. And that was to say, dirty mouse. House. Dirty mice. House. House. The accents were spot on, not only with Her Majesty, but also Philip and Margaret. Speaking of which, I found Tobias Menzies' Prince Philip took a lot more of a back seat in the majority of episodes this season, with him hardly even appearing in some episodes. It was also apparent that the Queen and Prince Philip had noticeably less chemistry this time around. I initially thought it was just Coleman and Menzies themselves, but when I took a step back I realised after the events of Season 2, the two characters of course would be drifting apart, resulting in what we see in Season 3. Moving to other members of the family, Helena Bonham Carter was outstanding as always. In some scenes you could even see Vanessa Kirby shine through her in her mannerisms, or I guess Margaret's mannerisms. Especially at the White House dinner with the United States President, played by Mr. Krabs from Spongebob by the way. They kept similar themes to the first two seasons as well, especially in relation to Margaret's priorities being outweighed by the Crown. But back to the Queen. We followed Claire Foy's Queen Elizabeth through the first steps of becoming the Sovereign. She was finding her feet and realising the scope of what the Crown really means. She questioned traditions and was shown the proper way for a royal to behave. Fast forward to Season 3 and now she is very set in her ways, and others, especially the Prime Minister, are the ones that question her traditions. A perfect example in an incredible episode was the third episode, and possibly a mild spoiler warning here. A natural disaster has people questioning the Queen's empathy due to the lack of action by Buckingham Palace. Some of the conversations between the Queen and the Prime Minister were genuinely moving and we saw a more vulnerable side to the Queen, and why her emotions are so lacking. It is quite tough to compare the two actresses as they are both playing the same character in two very different mindsets and eras. But when it comes down to it, I think I would have to say that Claire Foy's rendition of Queen Elizabeth II is more true to life. However, I found myself enjoying Coleman's cold, heartless performance more. At first it can come across as boring and plain, but after you get a peek behind the curtain after the first few episodes, you realise that it's intentional and she becomes so much deeper as a character, becoming a lot more interesting to watch. Plus, although it may not be entirely accurate, you could see Coleman's dry comedy chops coming through, which I loved. But then comes the question, if Netflix plan on sticking to their original plan of having a couple of seasons with Coleman and then getting yet another actress to don the crown, who will it be? This week the Daily Mail sparked rumours that Imelda Staunton was set to step into the royal shoes, but interestingly Netflix stomped on this rumour pretty quick, a Netflix spokesperson issuing the following statement, quote, We are currently filming season 4 of The Crown, but have not commissioned any further seasons as yet, therefore any news on casting remains pure speculation, end quote. If you ask me, Staunton is a great choice, Dolores Umbridge already has the right wardrobe. But with that rumour extinguished for now, if you had the choice, who would you have play an aged Queen Elizabeth II? And who would be her Prince Philip? Let me know in the comments. But if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe as I'll be bringing you up to date on any updates for The Crown. Until next time, this is Matt Rogers, and that is all.